mm, wraps around an animal, it's warm, and sometimes if the animal isn't clean, get the key. <laughs> That's true. Well, keeping your fur clean is important. It's very important, even for any sort of costume. Because, and that's another thing that I, um, why I brought all this fur, is because fur isn't just for furries. It's for all kinds of different types of uh, cosplays. Pokemon, um, there's a lot of animes that have furs in them, in different fursuits. And a lot of times those people will try to make their own characters and they don't know where to go. They don't know how to find this information. They'll go get furs from Joann's or something like that. And they're really cheap fur. I actually made one of my first tails um, out of Joann's fur. And um, here you can come and touch this. This is the first tail I made out of Joann's fur. It's my first husky tail. That's black fur. And that's the white craft fur they sell in little bales. Now this is my new husky tail. It took me a lot of time to make that. I've had that forever. This is Dia fur and fox fur. Much nicer, right? Much nicer. Now I'm, I'm actually giving that one over to some special person. <laughs> so yes, there's a big difference. This this tail took me. I carved it out of foam and. Um, I taped over it like I taped over this, and then I took off the pattern and cut out the pieces, and it took a really long time. This tail was made from a flat pattern. It was really easy. I'm going to be giving the patterns away, too. We've got patterns to give away for everything, really. And then, let's see. Oh, look, the chairs are fixed. Okay, cool. Here, let me see if these fit you. Come here. I'll tie up. Look, they don't fit. Wow, I got another waterfall. I'm too big for fursuits. They're not going to fit you. <laughs> All right, see? Who's better? Yeah. So, anywho. So the main problem with a lot of people, even whatever sort of costume they're making, is they don't know where to find the fur. They don't know where. Um, and there's a lot of online resources. The most common fur um, that people buy is the DF fur, distinctive fabrics furs. This is what a yard of fur looks like. I know, but see here, see how this is cut like that? Yeah. That's what happens when someone uses scissors. When you want to cut, you're always supposed to cut from the back. You find my blade. You cut someone, yo. I usually buy the, the raw blades. I need a blade to cut my blade. I usually buy the raw blades and for my box cutter, but I wonder if they don't carry them anymore. So I'm having to buy brand new little box cutters every time I need a new blade, which is ridiculous. Do you want one of these? See how it's terrible like that? Yeah. And so, if you were to do that, it would be horrible. Yeah. Oh. So, I've been thinking of making a tail, but I'm scared that it might come out too crap or something. No, I can give you patterns. It's great. It's super easy. It really is. It's going to be the easiest thing in the whole entire world. So, yes, this is distinctive fabric fur. It's quite common for um, unnatural colors of TV suits. Um, or for even raver fluffies, raver paws, uh, neko ears, neko tails, um, anything really. Um, sides of uh, costumes, um, Halloween costumes, like all kinds of things, especially the raver, raver fluffies are so expensive. They're like $50 for a pair of raver fluffies. You can just buy a yard of fur and make it yourself for 20 Or even make them for your friends and give them away and everyone will be really amazed. And it's just a simple like, flat pattern. And then we have, um, this is a realistic fur, oh, distinctive fabric. This is called DF fur, distinctive yeah. fabric fur. It's carried everywhere. If you go to my website, familiarnori.com, um, it has a list of everywhere you can buy fur. Yeah. Um, so I kind of put that all in one spot. And this is a more realistic fur. This is a teddy fur. It's very sleek and shiny. I use that to make this spot. 
reminds me of it reminds me of the fur on my dog. <laughs> yeah, it's it's super realistic, and it matches really great with this fur. So like that. It's a realistic fox fur. Very nice. This is high quality, about the most high quality you can get um, without going to like Tisabel. So it's like the high end fur. But the problem is, if you were to shave this down to this it would instead look like this. See how it's kind of um, matty and fluffy? Well, instead, you can take this fur that's already that length, so you don't have to worry about shaving it down, which is kind of really awesome. Hello, poor people. You know, this is a really awesome swatch book I could pass around. We've got greens. Oh, check out this. You can make raver fluffies out of that. <laughs> got greens. Um, you would have to have any thread, would you? I do, actually. Oh. Pete, keep following. <laughs> oh no, okay, well, let's see here. What about the plastic bag? No. <laughs> do you need a needle? I've got the needle, I think. Oh, okay. You just hot glue it. I just hot glue everything. <laughs> it's like cosplay duct tape. Um, let's see here. All these furs. This is morefabric.com fur, and then you get the brown seal, which is super short. And this is important keeping your swatches organized when you actually start doing stuff like this. And even if you're just doing regular fabrics, you get all these nice furs. This is MM Rust Box. This is very nice. So I made my tail out of. <laughs> okay, and I'm rambling now. Right, it's my Pandora tail. I have two cosplays for my sprinkles today. Uh, and that is um, my Pandera, <laughs> Mr. Pandaria, because some of them look like red pandas. And then um, Dr. Who, Tom Baker, the Tom Baker costume. Oh my gosh, I have the best collection of blues. I think I have the biggest collection. <coughs> There's a friend in the group that has a mom. I think I forgot when she's a mom. <laughs> this is actually, these two shades are new. Um, like cobalt and navy. I get excited about furs. Fabrics in general. I'm just like, furs everywhere. Oh, yeah. No. See? Right? So you just gotta keep everything organized. Keeping organized is also really important in having a. There's stuff over here. There you go. Um, keeping organized, having a place to work is important with, with any costume or cosplay. Having a nice table to work at that's free of distractions. Um, I found that if I work in front of my laptop or in front of my computer, I tend to get really distracted. Facebook, and I only get like a few things done, but if I have a table that's away from everything, maybe some music in the background, I'll get way more stuff done than I did if I was sitting in front of a laptop or a computer. Whose laptop is computer? Yeah, exactly. So, um, staying on task, and also if everything's in one place, you don't have to, you know, s s I don't know. No, someone gave that to me. Oh, yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't find it. Right? Um, so you'd be a lot more organized. Um, otherwise, this you're all over the place. This is the polyfill I use for my tails and for pretty much everything. It's super messy, but it's so worth it. What's it called? Um, it's called Perfect Loft uh, Cluster Fiber Fiberfill. Um, with some of the tails I don't like because they get super clumpy and you get little lumps and stuff sticking in the mess. Is that I'm a blonde? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> See, it's super fluffy. And so I can fill like three animals. Uh, I'll, I'll be there, but I want to see this uh, lecture. I'm going to lecture you. <laughs> Let's see. So, yeah. Is there any furries?
Yes. This is Buckram. They use them for hats too. Like if you want to do your top hats, your little tiny hats. Yeah. Also for stiffening cosplays, but mostly for eyes and making patterns. <laughs> I use this for everything. I really do. Um, especially making patterns. So what I will do. Oh, and also, if you notice, I always use hard cases for all of my stuff. Um, I think that's really important because um, with foam, they'll get really um, messed up. Oh, it's squished. See how this one's squished? I brought this specifically for this reason. Foam is really um, delicate. Ooh. So if you, yeah, no, this is what happens when you're not careful and you don't keep your head on the head form. Then it'll get squished and it'll stay this way. And so you'll have to put it back on a head form for a long time um, to get it back to shape. Like a hat or like anything that's not solid. Um, so yes. Here's some paws. Oh, got my paw pads on me. Can pass that around. This is my hand paw pattern. It took me a whole year to make myself. It was, took a long time to get these paws the way they are. And look how big this is. Come here, let me see your hand. They're huge. Put your hand up to this. How big is this pattern, really? It's huge, right? It's a huge pattern. Even on my hand, it's like you would look at this and you wouldn't think that this would turn into anything wearable. You know? Um, but it totally does. It totally does. And this is what it looks like. I'll turn this inside out. So you can see how I do a back stitch. I just really simply um, get a piece of um, piece of fleece. Get a piece of fleece and I will tack it onto the back right here, like this. I'll tack it on and then cut it out and then I'll trace it in a washable pen, uh, pen like a cloth pen. And, and then I'll do a back stitch along that. And so I'll get nice paws and I'll leave a little hole open and um, stuff it with horrible. And that's great, especially for the little cat girl micro paws, even at the library. That's fine too. And then, then you have a boyfriend here who sits and looks at things. It's true. What? Oh, goodness gracious. You can do stuff. Otherwise, you wouldn't have that handle. He's there. actually my handler. It's important to never go out in a fursuit or any sort of costume that covers your face or restricts your vision without someone there to make sure that you're okay. Hence, that's why Kenny usually relies on all of us. Yeah. yeah. Here, you can pass this around. There you go. It's very, very cool. And it's also warm if you just have mittens. That's the inside, and then here's the outside. <laughs> That's foamies. So what I'll do is I'll take my pattern, and it's important to save your patterns too, because you never know when you might need to make it again. And that's the reason why I use buckram for all of my patterning, um, because it's really easy to save. Where's my curio? Where's my that's a cute outfit, though. It should be. It was hundred and something dollars. <laughs> really? Well, you know, yeah. That's another thing. Um, making it yourself versus buying it. To be totally honest, making it yourself would probably be just as expensive as buying it in the long run, as far as buying the fabrics. Um, having a sewing machine, knowing how to use it, the time spent on the costume. Um, it, it really is, it's, it, 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 uh, it pretty much adds up, you know. Um, and then there's stuff that you have to buy, especially when you're doing furs. Um, nice clippers, hot glue guns, things like that. Oh, I have the most, some of those things, just I never learned how to sew. Uh, I will totally teach you how to sew. With the sewing machine, I can oh, sew me neither. By hand, hand, but so, uh, with the sewing machine, I have like two of them that my mother got me, and then she ended up using them. I can't. I well, cannot sew. <laughs> yeah, it, it's super hard. It really is. I, I hand stitch everything, but you can hand stitch with thick materials like this. But with cloth, it's really hard. So what I'll do is I'll just take my sharpie and use this pattern I already have. And then I'll make my extra pattern. And a lot of people, when they make 
um, hand fall patterns for their neck or tails or neck or ears or fursuits or cosplays or whatever you want to call it. Um, they'll leave like huge spaces. They'll try to trace their own hand like this and then trace it. But what the problem is, is, right, well, it'll stay that way, but when you sew it, you'll lose inches, and so it'll never fit. So you have to make them much bigger. I hand sew everything. I don't have a sewing machine that works. I would, if I had a sewing machine, that's my life would probably be a lot easier. Uh, okay, David Woodruff. Are you going to those little portables? No, that stuff doesn't go through her. Maybe if it was fabric, like if I was just using plain cloth fabric. Oh, that, you know what that looks like? It looks like that guy from the TV show. Uh-huh. Yeah, Alfred. Wilfred. <laughs> Are you drunk? No, it's over. Sober? What? <laughs> That's funny. Did you make that yourself? No, nah, I just. You just have it? That's adorable. <laughs> See, that's an example of a way to use furs without being, you know, weird about it. No, this is very weird if I walk down the street. <laughs> oh, that's oh, true. Heck? You know what I want to make really bad? I want to make one like that except Super Mario, the little raccoon. Oh, oh no, I want uh, that's uh, an empty. <laughs> Yeah. I want um, Mr. Bear from Gravitation. Yes! <laughs> okay, I do need a needle because I cannot find mine. Sure. <laughs> I tucked it into the thing. Uh, we're still in the infant seal. Oh, okay. Yeah. It into the That's what she said. Thank you. Um, <laughs> I'm terrible. I'm a terrible person. Oh, please. Uh, I, I, people think I'm quiet until I, all of a sudden I talk and like, you said that? <laughs> like when the waiter came by at one time when I was with my, my cousin, he said, did you need anything else? And I said, yeah, like you or something like that. <laughs> think about it. It sounds like Lady Gaga. Is that Lady Gaga? It sounded like David, if you keep hanging around, I'm going to put you on a fursuit, and then you'll really be in trouble. I'm going to be sitting here sewing this on. I know, right? It's just such a little stitch. Stitch and itch. I hope if I sew these socks to the tights, I won't pull the tights and I get a run. <laughs> oh, that'd be terrible. A little nail polish. A little touch of clear nail polish will stop a run. It's true. I'm ready to run on these tights Really? Yeah, I'm up on the thighs. I didn't notice and I pulled them on and it's too late now. <laughs> oh, that's nice. So yeah, and then this is why I use rock arms. So when I need to um, keep a pattern, uh, this thing has been through a lot. <laughs> so sometimes I just need to make new ones. I've been also trying to think of ways to maybe laminate my pattern pieces and save them. Because there's nothing more time consuming than having to remake a pattern because you weren't smart enough to save it in the first place? Uh, I think it's a lot of self-laminating kits. Self-laminating? Uh-huh, they're, they're just full the... Full lamination. Yeah, we have or laminators. Um, I just... Uh, Never get around to it? Well, it's just because the pattern pieces are, are big sometimes. It's an idea I've been batting around in my head. I think it's a really good idea. <laughs> so, but uh, the one thing that's unique about my patterns for hand paws compared to other people's, because there's a lot of hand paw patterns out there, is that I don't leave space between my fingers. I don't. There's no reason to, ever. It's pointless, and it's, it's so time consuming, um, and it just causes so much trouble. Because when, when you sew together these two pieces of fabric right here, just like with the hand paws I showed you, it creates a gap between the fingers by having to sew the, the seam allowance. Um, and that's really the secret to making a really good paws. It's taken me a long time to learn that, um, but it, it's it's great. Um, and actually, I found that out when I did a when I found a glovers pattern um, for people who actually make gloves. Uh -huh. Except when people who make gloves, they just cut it like right there. So it's kind of weird. <laughs> Here we go. And then I can give this one away to someone who wants to call me. Yay! I have one set of pink gloves. I have black gloves. Purples. Put that aside. Okay. Well, this is not really oh, the stitching? Yeah. Yeah, that's something you really can talk, Lou. <laughs> oh, I was supposed to test this outfit yesterday, but 
Everybody fell asleep and I didn't feel like I moving around, so that was exciting. <laughs> Let's see, how about eat? Can I my big, big ones? My stompies. Oh, these are stompy feet. These are very old. These are the first feet paws, the second feet paws I ever made. So they've been through a lot. I've had them for two years. So, there's a loose seam. right now. What I use for the bombs here, and there's been a lot of debate, you know, a lot of people were like, oh, well, you can't use this. You can. This is um, foam mats from Great Mats, <laughs> um, and I use them for feet bottoms. You can also use them for your, um, well, if you live in your bedroom, it's like these are like $2 a piece, if, if you live in your bedroom. If you live in a house <laughs> where you have carpet and you um, don't want to ruin your carpet with a bunch of stuff that's terrible, you know, you can just put this on your floors and just use that so it's easier to sweep up and clean. So it'll cause a huge disaster. Two feet, two feet by two feet, yes. Um, and so that's how I did that. I just I used to put a piece of about stupid uh, right. dog beds on the floor. <laughs> right, yes, exactly. So this is, um, stompy feet are something that was always really confusing for me and for a lot of other people. How to make these big sort of Mega Man feet. Um, <laughs> This is different than the other patterns. I have a unique pattern that, that I've never seen anyone use. It was my own thing. And that's kind of the whole, the funnest part about making like furs and working with furs in different costumes that are original is um, that you can try new things and I encourage you to try new things. Uh, with this, this is actually, uh, I, next time I would use a thicker base. This is actually a half inch foam glued into a tube. So it's, it's um, Flat, and it's actually built on a crock, and these are actually pillows. <laughs> these are these are little, little pillows. I I just um, I cut a shape, a round shape, and made two darts, and it and made toes, and I sewed them on. In, in future hindsight, I probably would have used solid toes, but at the time, it seemed like the greatest thing in the whole world. Um, it's really easy to epoxy. But I've had these for a really long time. I really have, and they've lasted. And you know, I like them. And then, these are the feet I made for the new boyfriend. Actually, my favorite feet that I've made, I made for another builder. Who was my favorite builder? Who was my favorite builder? And I actually got to do a trade with her. And it was kind of amazing seeing someone who I look up to actually making something that I like. Hi, guys. Hey. Lost my shoes. Right? And so these are also built on, uh, these are built on slippers. And then I made these little foam bases. And this is a great time actually to talk about kids and, and these sort of mascot head fursuits that um, do restrict vision. Sure, he's gonna put it on. He's gonna break the magic. No. Oh, I know, I saw some guy in a fursuit at one of the cons and then he took it off. And that's horrible, that. that's something you never yeah. wanna do. This is their, He's just trying it on. But this it is ruined just my, my whole effect. I used to hug him until I found out who it was. Right, right. But something like this that restricts vision, you want to be careful with your handling. If you have a handle, this is why you always keep a handler. Make sure because they can't see down here. It comes to right there. Right. Well, this vision is good right on this there. one, but lower underneath they can't and see. And as far as top and bottom, you get to about right there. Right. On the bottom. Like right there. So oh, if, sure. I, if I want to see below that, I actually have to like. Bend right. Down exactly. Feet. So um, that's why. It's so I can't. I can't actually see where my feet are. Right. Down. That's why it's always important at conventions if you're going to wear something that covers your face to always have someone with you to make sure that you don't hurt anyone or injure anyone or trip on something or just mow down some little kid. Because <laughs> that would kind of be terrible. But yet you also have those little kids at the conventions that, that aren't being watched by the parents or running like oh, chickens yeah. without heads and then they yeah, slam then into you. Yeah, but you have her who are clearly watching her kids and that's wonderful. Um, let's see. But that's, and that's one of the other reasons that, that I love making these costumes is being able to make them for the little kids and it's... <laughs> Right, and making them laugh and giggle, and it's so great. And it's also a wholesome sort of thing to do with the kids. Um, there's a lot of them, because 
the, the thing with the Pokemon costumes and the Pikachu costumes, it's a Pokemon, I suppose, or whatever, those sorts is um, they're 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 not original, but also if you're going to, you can't really buy them. You can't buy a really awesome like costume um, because there's a lot of actual um, legalities that go into it. Um, people get in trouble. It's it's a big debate, and there's been. Um, on both sides of the fence that, yes, you can get into trouble, no, you have never seen anyone get into trouble for it, but there have been incidences where people make Disney costumes, Pokemon costumes, for profit that do get in trouble by these companies. And so that's why a lot of people like me who make these costumes on a regular basis as a hobby level do original characters because I don't have to worry about that. I can just create my own characters. And then I build cosplay off of that. Like um, for Sprinkles, she has a Pandarian outfit and also Doctor Who outfit and she has pretty Lolita dresses. And, uh, and then my friend also, this is for my friend Lauren and um, she has a character too. And they also, so, so, so they could take this, like say if you wanted to do um, work with, uh, with the hospital or with, uh, you know, um, fundraising or an animal shelter, you can't go out in your Pikachu costume because you could get in trouble, you know. Um, and they could, they could actually, because uh, they want to have control over who, um, who, who's representing them in the public, and that's totally understandable. Um, but usually they only get go after people if they're making money off of it, or if they're using it like outside of a business, you're wearing your Pokemon costume outside of a business to promote your business, you'll get in trouble for it. But normally, if you're just like me and you're making it for fun, they're not going to get you in trouble. But, um, but I also make them for other people, so I don't want to get in trouble. Um, so that's why I do things like this. And, and so I can take something like this, or my friend can take something like this and go to a charity and, and be okay with helping promote the, uh, you know, the, the need uh, with their own costumes. And also, it's a great way to win Halloween back. <laughs> it's a great way to a Halloween costume. And um, so I guess now I'll talk about a little bit about safety. Safety is, um, is important because you can get hurt wearing these. You really can. Um, with, uh, if, if you don't have enough ventilation when you make them, you got to be able to breathe. People will make them with closed mouths and that means that it's hard to breathe or see. Um, making it comfortable on the inside, making sure that nothing's poking at you is also really important. Pins, yes. <laughs> yes. He thinks every time I buy a box of pins, I just dump them all over the floor. <laughs> so I'm like, I got new pins. I got the pins and you're the only one that does that. <laughs> right? And, and that's important too. Also knowing your limits and knowing how long you can stay in one of these costumes. Something, Anything that covers your head is going to create in your head, and also if you're wearing a full suit. And see, is that what you're wearing? Is that wool or is that lycra? This or? Your head thingy. I think it's wool. Okay, well, I, something like that is or called fleece, a, I think. a balaklava. And it's uh, balaklava. usually the one. Balaklava. balaklava. It's a delicious Greek dessert, and you also <laughs> put it on your head. <laughs> <laughs> Little thin strips of pastries that keeps your person cold. Um, and then you'd want to wear that underneath. Some are actually built off of it, some aren't. Um, but it also keeps you cool, also wearing um, cool clothing underneath. And just knowing your limits and knowing, um, you know, and because for me, the worst thing to do is to take off your head in public. It's the worst. What, one of the group members that was oh, telling you, you about the friends? dragon guy, he actually... Uh, his dragon head actually stars. has a uh, fan built into, into it, and he has a and he wears the battery pack around his waist. He didn't. He didn't come. His mom got sick. Anywho, so yeah, staying cool is important. And if you're not in a place like a convention center where you can't, um, where you can't. Um, Go into your hotel room and just take off what you need to take off. It's important to have a pre-designated area that you can take your suit off and cool off that doesn't like startle people. Because ruining the magic for me is like the worst thing in the whole entire world. 
Well, and one of the other things that the handler needs to have with them is some water or something. Yes, I'm a terrible handler, but you would be a great handler. You, you yeah, make I mean, I'm handler. usually well prepared with water for everybody. And, and one of the other things you can do with that is you can get the giant straws. Like, because a giant straw will reach into a suit so that they can actually get water while they're in the suit. So. You can buy two. I, I, I love Home Depot. My mom works at Home Depot. Actually, one thing that I found out that works really good too is the uh, aquarium That's good. Tube. You can actually like cut it to a length where like it won't look odd to the person in the, to the person looking at the guy drinking the water in the sea. Well, yeah, the other, one, one of the things I think was like uh, uh, pixie sticks, like the giant pixie sticks. You you know you empty those out and then yeah, I use those I used to use those as trolls. Those are yeah. fun. See, and what this is, is this is a tape pattern. This is what happens before fur gets put on it. I've already got the eyes installed, which is important, so I can make sure that I can see out of it. Because if I wait until later to put on the eyes, there's no telling where the eyes are going to be on the suit, you know, or if I'll be able to see or even breathe. Being able to put it on and also having the bib already attached and the neck already attached here. Because I think that's one of the, the biggest problems that people who make these sorts of things have is that they'll only make it to here, and then they'll finish the whole head, and then they won't know how to put on the neck. And so it creates a big pattern. And so what I would do is just do that. And how I made this pattern is I actually taped it onto him. <laughs> I taped it right onto him. And she rips it off. Huh? And I ripped it off. <laughs> so yeah, there we go. And this one's great. Do you guys want to try this on? Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Don't ask them twice. <laughs> Okay, you stick your head right there. Alright, stick your head in there. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's so cute. That's there you go. Turn around so your mom can see. <laughs> <laughs> it's just foam. They won't break it. They can play with it. Just be careful. There you go. <laughs> That's really cute, though. I know, right? I'm amazing pictures. Hi, they all want one now. That, oh, that's no. why. It's, easy. it's something to do with the kids. Be careful. You know, I'll help you guys take it off. Okay. That's that's why uh, I would love to see like the like after like after the, the kid after the furry after the kid of the furry parents is all grown up. It has this one's sure. I would love to see that. Oh. Yeah. This is good practice for me for one for the one thirty panel because at least then because at least then the because at least then we, we're now getting. Okay, well here let me put it on you. I think the afternoon panel will be a little bit different than the morning panel because we're just being all wacky in here. Madison. Oh, so we found a tail. Oh, that's another topic. Kids and kids grabbing tails. Kids and tails. Yeah. <laughs> Turn around so they can take your picture. You're not going to see much of that. I also recommend a handler that does not have a knee. Yeah. Careful. That's okay. No hating. No hating. That's where. Yeah, that's present. That's very heavy. Let's see. That's, an, that's another piece of safety is when. The, yeah. the little kids see the oh, tail true. and they want to grab it and yank it and it. shake it oh, around. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, see, that's the, that's the, that'll, be, that'll be in time for the 130 topic. 
for the 130 right, panel. Because then, that, cause then now, because then, you know, this is like the morning pre-show <laughs> panel to the actual <laughs> afternoon good panel that we're gonna have. Okay. So we're just having a um, gag reel yeah, panel so right now. Um, this is about a yard of furs, going to run me about 20 bucks. But for someone that's small, you can furs more than enough. And then you can get some foam from Joanne's Fabrics. Okay. Something like this. It's the upholstery foam. Really easy. And then you just make a basic tube out of it. And then you'll build up the shape with something like this. Um, super easy. And it's all foam and it's all in good and fun. And then, here, you can take a look at this. It's just, you make it round. Kind of... As if the little kids can come back at 1.30, I think this will be a good panel. These are these. Okay. Yeah, they're really nice. Okay. Yeah, and then this is something the kids can do, and it doesn't matter if it looks good, because they're going to have fun wearing it anyways. I'm not wearing it. You know, so, and it's foam. Um, but, uh, and, and it's super fun for kids. I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend a full suit, but having a head, or a <laughs> tail, also great. Yeah. <laughs> Madison likes all of your stuff. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I got the, the shape of my huge gut wrong. Yeah, one, one thing is, is that, you know, everybody can come back at 1.30, even the kids, and then we'll have a real good... shipping and that's usually more than the actual product <laughs> itself. And Joanne's does sell some pretty decent, actually, um, what is it? Uh, Hancock's is actually my favorite like in the store. Hancock mm -hmm. Online. Online. Online then you'll be fine with fabric.com. And that's on your site? Yes, we were trying to figure out last night what familiar. Right, 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 yeah. Well, um, uh, Nori came from, because my online name for a long time when I was in high school is Nettie of Nori, which is backwards for Iron Maiden. <laughs> so that was my email for the longest time. And then I picked up the nickname Familiar. And so I ended up being Familiar Nori. It just kind of pushed together. And I guess it kind of stuck, I suppose. Madison, one more picture and then you gotta give her back her stuff. Yeah. Oh, I turned it off. Good job. There we go. All right, let's pick up their, their stuff. But if you if you come back this afternoon, I'll bring you I'll make you some patterns so you can uh, make some simple tails or maybe some hand paws. Oh well, thank you. You're welcome. You said 1:30? I think so. Yeah, 1:30 and uh, in the uh, theater. Uh, right. The main event. Yeah. They just don't need the chairs. Yeah. How many? Ten. Uh, dozen. Yeah, that'll be okay. Ten dozen. Okay. <laughs> All right, all those things. Yes, all my birds. They're all in boxes. I know, the sparkle birds are my favorite. It's girl thing. I know, right? The blue one, I like the blue, too. I like the pinks. Oh, I like you guys. Thank you. I like the blue. Oh my gosh, I know I have so many blues. Do you guys want to thank you for letting her play with all her stuff? Thank you. You're welcome. That's why I do it. Okay. We'll come back in a little bit. Maybe your mommy will leave you one. I'm not very crafty, though. That was good. Cool. Okay. Thank you, Now, here. What? I 
think we... That's so cute. Let's see, I think you, I think you got most of it covered and then also point on the little kids and tails. Little kids and tails. Oh yes, the little kids and tails. That you, you saw, I'm sure, that they want to clutch when they get a hold of a head or any sort of thing, they are going to tear it apart. So you either better be really comfortable with those kids or really confident of the product that you're making to go, it's okay if they mess with it. And I'm more the latter. I know that it's okay if they mess with my stuff because it's not gonna rip apart. Um, so I'm confident with that. Um, and that's important, but if, if you're not, most of the time that you're gonna be around kids, if you're wearing a suit, you're gonna be in a suit. So you're not gonna be able to convey, hey, stop touching, oh, you needed something. You needed uh, scissors, right? Oh no, I got a, a razor. I'm like, oh, okay, I was gonna give you a blade. I totally lost track. But you're not gonna be able to even tell that a kid's tugging on your tail, or if there's a kid below you or around you, because they'll just scatter. So that's why I always work with a handler and make sure that they can keep my stuff under control. And that's with any costume, really. Oh, oh and um, I blew at the zoo. Oh my gosh, uh, right? Uh, um, at our zoo, yeah. we had this one guy, I think it was in a gray wolf or coyote suit with a tutu on. Uh -huh. He kept grabbing um, one of our group members' tails and then running off. <laughs> oh my gosh. I was about to... And I was about to go full bore on that guy, like, yeah, hey, so, knock it off! And if you hurt some kid, if some kid tugs on your tail and you fall on them, they're not going to be like, oh, you're a poor $3,000 fursuit. They're going to be, you SOB, you hurt my child, your life is over, sort of thing. So really, it's in your best interest. Oh, i got to plug my hot glue gun back in. Yeah, but then, the, the, uh -huh. then there's also a lot of... Okay things you go you go through especially if you're a friend of somebody in a fursuit and you're in a costume right because at boo at the zoo i went i met up with uh kenny and aaron uh -huh. and um this lady walked by he's like look kids it's kung fu panda oh my gosh and just like aimed it directly at me yeah, it's just something you have to be aware of. If and you're going into a public place, you need to be aware of your surroundings. I hope you can, like, edit this. <laughs> well, this is the gag reel until the 1.30 show, so... Oh, yeah, no, this is just raw, okay? Yeah. Gag reel, woo! Okay. Um, yeah. No rules! Put your shirt back on! There's one rule! There's, there's also, you know, that's another thing, is when you're going to a public place in costume, even if you're wearing one of those costumes, or if you're going to Disneyland in a Disneyland outfit, or if you're going to Six Flags in a Bugs but, but Bunny costume or something like that, you really have to be aware. Or even in, in this day and age, going anywhere in any sort of costume that doesn't seem normal in a public place might get you the wrong sort of attention from security, from the cops, from anything. So that's why it's, because if you went to the bank like that, they would just end you and make it look an accident. Yeah. Right? Um, and so you have to be aware and plan ahead on if you're going somewhere like a mall that you need to let them know. You know, and they may say okay, and then you'll get there. Well, you may call the manager, the owner of the whatever, I know, right? And and they may say that it's okay, but you get there and they go, oh no, no, no. Especially when you're talking about furries and things. Um, you just, you never know, you really don't. It could, it could go either way. Um, shoes, shoes to build on. These are my favorite things ever. These are my favorite things. This is a personal pair, so this isn't something that I would build off of for someone else. But um, they, these are called doggers. They're rocket dogs. I call them doggers because that's what they're called. They are foam. They're like Crocs. They have arch support. They're Velcro. When they're in season, they're inexpensive. Um, they don't cost but $10, $15. You know, um, and they're comfortable, and they don't get wet. So you don't have to worry about suiting for an hour and a half or two hours, taking off your clothes, and then um, that came out wrong. <laughs> <laughs> taking, off 
taking off your suit and putting everything away for the day, and then coming back three hours later on the inside, your feet are still wet, cold sweat. It's gross. Don't have to worry about it. And also, hot glue sticks really well to these. Unlike Crocs, because these are kind of like Crocs. Crocs, of course, rubber. Right, and Crocs don't have a bad heel, so it's it's kind of hard there. Um, people go on slippers, but they're really uncomfortable to walk around in all day. You know, um, I just don't much like it. I need to open the phone so I can show you how to do that thing. And then let's see. Oh, here's my phone. Uh, safety around kids. Uh, interacting with kids is another one. Is like yes, because like the little kid will be will be like, hey, 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 right. Trying to get down to their level and wave, or you don't really know. Like when you go up to a kid, you don't know if they're gonna cry or puke or be really excited to see you. You don't really know what you're walking into, so generally, I just let the kid be really excited to see you. You don't really know what you're walking into, so generally, I just let the kid approach me. And, and it's see. basically with kids and. A jungle of infants. Right. They never know they're little. They're little animals until they start developing. They're always they're little animals until they hit twenty five. <laughs> and even after that, it's kind of iffy. Um, eyes. This is what I make my eyes out of right now. It's my favorite thing to use. It's um, plastic funnel. It's a food funnel. It's not a normal funnel. I got it from the dollar store. Pete. It's great, huh? Huh? Okay, yeah. Um, I got my headphones. Like, oh, I got them at the dollar store, and um, I just get a bit of buck rum and wet it and put it right over like that. And it's great. Okay. It's a great thing to do. Phony is craft foam. Great for eyelids, eyebrows, eyes themselves. I mean, her eyes out of foamies. Um, all the eyes, follow me eyes, are made out of foamies. Um, uh, for the foamy eye. I think in my next panel I'll actually do a full makeup, a uh, full build of the me eye. I think I'll do a full build. <laughs> so um, that'll be that. But um, I wanted to show you kink me on. This is something I need practice with. I've done full hair kink me on wax before. Now I will show you how I do this. I need a rubber band. Oh well. I'll just, I'll just cut off a little bit off the tip. Just the tip, bro, just the tip. What is this? There's... No, not where the table thing. was. What else is there? I don't know. Um, hair tails to fur tails. Cause like, I know there are a lot of tails out there that are, that are hair-like or made with yarn. Yeah, I don't, I don't know anything about yarn tails. I've seen it, I don't, I've never done it before. So I don't know. They do sell, um, I saw them, I thought it was super yarn catalog. Uh, they sell particular yarns that are already half fluffy, like, like this. Yeah? But long pieces of Oh. Yeah. So that you don't have to start from basic super yarn. They sell ones that they make for scarves. Okay. They have pom poms on them and things already connected, so it's, it's much thicker. Oh, come on, now. Those specialty uh, yarn catalogs. They usually give uh, people that make afghans. This is also when you're talking about the hair, they can make four scales or something like that. Or hair for your suit, or hair for anything. They have, um, they have little rabbit's yeah. feet, you know, fake, fake rabbit's feet, but do, um, her toes. Hello. No. Okay. Uh, like like That's kind of what I'm doing. I'm just yeah, kind of messing around. I don't know. This is the pre-show footage. Oh, 